Evening guys, this is Ole Armstrong from Grey Matter Robotics, FTC Team 4226. Following on from a previous video by Josh, I'm going to be doing a short introduction to using Robot C for programming your robot. This will probably turn into a series of short videos, but today we'll just focus on getting started and getting you up and running using Robot C. So, uh, there's a, a small article on our website uh, comparing LabVIEW and Robot C. Um, so you might want to check that out before you decide fully whether you want to use LabVIEW or Robot C. I do highly recommend using Robot C as it's a lot more versatile. It allows you to make changes easier than pissing about with a flowchart thing in LabVIEW. But yeah, let's get started. So first we're going to want to open up robotc.net From here we can download the software that we need to It comes with a 30 day free trial But you may find that you've already got a license for robotc If you look in your starter kit or some other crap that you get with when you join up to FTC we I don't know what we bought, but we had a license in there for Robot C version 2. Point something. So if we go into download and Robot C for Mindstorms, um, if you've got a license, you want to check what version it's for, because um, it may be for version 2. So if it's for version 2, download this one down here. If it's for version 3, then you can just download this button here. If you don't have a license, then go ahead and use 30 days of the trial and then you'll want to purchase it after that it's about I think it's about fifty dollars I can't remember off the top of my head yeah you can get a single license for fifty dollars so if you you want to go ahead and download this um, and you'll also want the Lego USB driver the NXT driver. So once you've downloaded and installed those, you're best off installing Robot C and then the driver. You'll want to reboot your machine and then launch up Robot C. When you first launch up Robot C, you'll get some um, start page coming up. You can just click out the little exit that was over here. And first, what we're going to do is just do a little bit of setup just to make it work a bit nicer. If you go on View Preferences, and then, uh, actually, first, you're going to need to go to Window Menu Level Super User, then go View Preferences, Detailed Preferences, and just click through these and see if there's anything you want to change personally I'll just change the editor thing, changing the tab size and indenting and all that rubbish it just makes it a bit nicer, get rid of the splash screen as well and the startup because that's horrible and it takes ages but anyway, um, now we're going to want to just do a little bit more setup so if you go on robot and then platform type I'm going to choose NXT and Tetrix. It might be under this drop down if you don't have it up here. So that will enable us to use all the Tetrix controllers, etc. Um, right, so let's go ahead and just create something. So if we click the little new button here, you'll, you'll come up with a nice new document which we can just use to do what I'm programming. So first we're going to want to set up our motors and the Tetris controllers. So it's a nice easy screen we can do that rather than typing that in ourselves. So we've got robot uh, motors and sensors set up. Click the Tetris controllers tab and then click custom and then enter in your controller setup. 
So for example on the S1 port on your NXT, what we've got is we've got three motors and then on S2 we've got a servo controller. I mean obviously it's going to be different for what you've got, but that's just what we've got. So under motors, you can ignore these, these are the um, NXT motors, so we can just ignore those for the moment. But as you can see here we've got port S1, controller 1, motor 1, controller 1, port um, motor 2, you can get the idea, you can name your motors, set whether they've got an encoder, um, you don't have to name them but it's just a lot easier. Same thing for servos, name your servos, set whether they're standard or continuous, and just click OK, and it will give us all the config that we needed for that. So, what we're going to do, is if we just go straight into making this thing move controller motor. So what we're going to do is create the main loop. But this is hopefully you've got some idea on programming. If not, then I recommend you reading up. Uh, so you go into C programming. I think it's .com. Slow internet. Yeah. Um, if you go to cprogramming.com, this gives you a, it's a lovely website. It's very useful. But it gives you um, somewhere on here. There's going to be some this C++ tutorial or C tutorial. It might be worth just looking through this and getting a general idea on C. If you don't have any clue on C, but hopefully you will have some idea on programming in some description. But what we're going to do is this is our little section that's going to be run by the NXT. Um, what we're literally just going to do is move a motor, um, wait ten seconds, and then turn it off. So if we go, if we type motor, um, motor. D, whatever you've called it. You know, it might be better if I name my motors first. Front, back, yep, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Motor, front is equal to, and then you can give it a power range between 0 and 100. So let's just set it at 50% power. Then if we wait one millisecond, Hundred. Well, I'll explain all these commands in a minute if you don't understand them. Right. What this will do is it runs through here. So as you can see here, it sets the power of motor front, which is I've got it set to S1 controller one motor one. Um, it waits a hundred milliseconds, so that's 0.1 seconds, and then it sets the power to zero. It will then finish the program, um, and that is good. So, unfortunately, I haven't actually got the robot with me at the moment, so I can't test this. But I'll show you how it works. So hopefully, there's no issues with that. If you go robot compile program, it'll bug you to save it. So I'll just save it to my desktop. Apologies. This should be a task main. Because it's that's how it's done. So if we go compile, hopefully we'll get it compiled successfully. You also notice that these are coloured. Just show you that it's all good. So now what you'll need to do is set up the connection with your NXT brick. Now it depends how you're doing this. If you I recommend just doing it over USB to start with. It's a lot easier. It took me ages to set up using Bluetooth and it was a nightmare. So if you just do it over USB, just plug your NXT brick just straight into the side of your computer through the USB, turn it on and go to robot, I can't even remember what I clicked on, 
robot NXT link setup. And then you, your brick will pop up up here. The first thing you're going to need to do is select your brick and do a firmware download. It's just because Robot C requires a certain firmware on the NXT brick. This is fine. It's nice and easy to install. It'll go through and do that. Then it'll probably scan again. But as soon as you, after you've done the firmware download, select the brick and click select over here. Um, that will enable you to have communication with your NXT. And unfortunately, this is frozen. Right. So then, then it will pop up USB, then the address of it. So then you can go compile and download. I'm not going to click it because it's just going to freeze it up because I'm not actually connected, but it should. That will download it onto your NXT brick. And then you can go ahead and select the program on the NXT and run that. And that is the basics of Robot C. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll probably do another few more videos, you know, just showing you various things you can do controlling servos and encoders and tasks and. There's a whole load of stuff that we can show you, but here's our program that we've got. It's quite long, but you know, we've got variables and tasks and just functions. And I'll also show you displaying like strings on the NXT brick just for debugging why it's not working and getting it working from that. We'll also do an important one on setting the program ready to be used in the FTC competition because there are a couple of lines that you need to add before you can actually it will work. Um, I'll probably also do a small video on setting up the Samantha module because that was a massive pain in the ass as well for us to set up. So that is it. Thank you for watching and as usual do all your subscribing and stuff.